Palo Santo is like a, um, I burn it to clear energy, to create space. Like let's say you've had a really emotional session and you want to just like reset the tone in your space. I'll burn Palo for that. Um, it's also good for protection. So most of the time I'll burn sage to clear negative energy or space and then I'll burn Palo to kind of seal in positive good vibes. But okay, so I just wanted to share um, some information about crystals, working with crystals, um, information that I found along my journey that's been really helpful for my personal journey. Um, first, I'm going to start by explaining what crystals are, and I'll show some to you. Um, crys so crystals are minerals that have like basically a perfect geometric pattern. The, the molecules themselves make like a perfect geometric pattern. This is a clear quartz. And the reason why that's really cool and important to know is because it means that energy and the frequency of the crystal is always stable. Because it's such a perfect geometric um, structure, the frequency is always stable. Whereas for us, our frequencies are constantly changing. They're constantly in flux. Um, so the reason why it's so beautiful to work with crystals is because if you want to tap into a specific frequency, you can go to a certain crystal and always know that it's going to be that same frequency that it was when you put it down a day ago. And for like beings like us who have such an influx frequency, we're easily, our frequency and our energy is easily influenced by other people, by other um, living things, by crystals. So it's nice to have a stable frequency that you can work with to help influence your own frequency. Um, so yeah, I like I found them to be really, really helpful on my healing journey. Also, they're just like really pretty to have in the house. I'm a Taurus, so um, I'll put, oh, okay, so many more people join. So I'll just rewind a little bit and just say that um, one of the cool things about crystals is that they have a constant frequency. So when we work with them, because our frequencies as people are so easily influenced, so easily in flux, working with crystals allows you to harmonize with that crystal's frequency. So like amethyst, for example, is a good like calming um, crystal. It's also a really good crystal for like spiritual, like looking inward and spiritual work. So if you're ever in a state of mind where you want to do that, surround yourself with amethyst um, and it'll help you to harmonize with the frequency. But the important thing to realize though, like a lot of people, like they'll collect their crystals and they'll be like, oh, I can't leave the house without my special amethyst crystal. And if I do, then I'm gonna have a bad day. The point is not to be codependent on your crystals. Like, cause this is the thing, crystals will leave you. I've had crystals leave me. My partner has had crystals leave him. Um, these are like living things basically. So they have energy and frequency. When they decide that they're done working with you, they will leave. So like you'll just lose a crystal one day and you're like, what? Like it's normally with all my other crystals. That crystal was done, it's out. So you can't become too codependent and attached to your crystals because the point is they're supposed to remind you that this frequency that's in this amethyst is also within you. That's what it is. It's a, it's a stabilizer so that when you're working with it, you're like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm calm too. I'm spiritual or like, yeah, like, okay, I'm creative. This is a carnelian. Like, I'm creative too. Like, I, I have emotional control. So the point is to not get codependent and to use them as tools in your healing journey. Um, so there are different ways that you can use them. One of the easiest ways 
to use crystals is just to collect them and then put them somewhere on a shelf or on a table or by your bedstand um, because they do nothing without you. They have a frequency which they radiate out if you're close to it, if you're holding it, um, if it's on you in your pocket, you're getting that, you're, you're harmonizing with that frequency. So you don't necessarily have to do anything, but they work better when you have intentions, when you're using them intentionally. But the first thing you could do is literally just put them all over the place. It's, they're pretty, crystals are really pretty. There's something natural. It's always nice to have natural things in the house along with plants. Um, and they just have positive vibrations. So, you know, they help cast out negative vibrations in the house too. They're not miracle workers though. Like, th like everything that I found along my journey, you still have to put in work. Like, it's not just like, I have a crystal and now I'm super calm and creative. Like, no, you gotta put in work and figure out things that help make you calm, but you do the work with the crystals. Another thing that you can do is take cleansing baths with the crystals. So like good quartz are really good. Clear quartz are really good to put in your bath water. Rose quartz are really good to put in your bath water. Um, amethyst is always great to put in your bath water. I'll take really nice cleansing baths. Um, you know, I'll put sea salt in it, drop some crystals. I'll drop like four or five crystals in there. Um, some herbs in the water, light a candle, light an incense. I like to take silent baths, but you could um, put music on. And basically that frequency now is in the water. It's in the water that's surrounding you. When I take baths, I take intentional baths for the most part. Like even if it's just like, I need this bath to calm down, I'll put in a nice amethyst in the water and I'll just like release whatever I was holding on to and um, basically allow my body to harmonize with the frequency of the amethyst in the water. Um, well, I also like, I have an amethyst here in my drinking water. If you can see that. So you can always charge your water or your food with your crystals, with um, whatever... Like, so you should Google the crystals and see what they're generally, what their frequencies are, what they're good for working with. And if that's something that you're working on, um, yeah, drop in some water, charge your water. You'll, you'll start to find out ways to harmonize with the crystals. Um, sleeping with them, you could put them under your pillow. You could put them next to you on your bedstand. Wearing them as jewelry. This is a rose quartz. Um, I have some amethyst in my ring. Amethyst is um, one of the highest, if not the highest frequency stone. Um, so those are always really two good options if you're a beginner, um, which I was not very long ago, to wear on you, to always have on you because they're always just gonna keep you like in a place of love and peace um, even when people try you, <laughs> um, y'all know the old me, I like to pop off, but I'm working on that and the crystals are helping me, um, <laughs> but I'm doing the work. Like I said, you gotta keep doing the work. Um, so I'm going to get a little bit more detail just by using chakras as an example. I really, <laughs> Jess knows. Okay. I really, really like working in chakras, in my chakras. It's something about like going through the colors and just like, I, I just love working through my chakras. So I use the crystals a lot in accordance with my chakras, which is why I made a crystal chakra set for beginners. Um, so I'm gonna use those crystals from the kit and hopefully this will help you start to work through your own chakras too. So this is kind of like a crystal chakra class. Um, cause, so the thing about chakras is that just like I said, crystals have their own frequencies. Chakras also have different frequencies. So when you're walking through your chakras and you're healing your chakras, your 
are tapping into different frequencies within yourself. Um, so that's why it's like, it's really beautiful to work with crystals in those chakras because if you're healing a certain chakra and you feel like you need to raise that vibration there, you can grab, like I'm pointing at my heart right now, you can grab a rose quartz and start doing work in that chakra so that your heart chakra can harmonize with the rose quartz. And the thing about crystals also is that sometimes you just got to let the crystal choose you. Um, your crystal work should be a very personal experience. So just because someone else loves citrine, you might like tourmaline. Like whatever works for you is what works for you. So stick to that and, you know, because crystals have this le this living frequency energy within them, you can have a really personal experience with them. That's why pe that's why you know people who work with crystals look so crazy to other people because we love them so much, like they're little beings. Like it's just like, oh my gosh, you're so amazing. So once you start to work with crystals, you'll you do become attached. But that's why I say you shouldn't be attached. So, okay, so this is a desert rose crystal. It's so pretty. Um, this is good for working through your root chakra. Your root chakra is located around the base of your spine. <laughs> yeah. Jess was the OG crystal person. Jess was working with crystals before I even knew what to do with them. So shout out to you, Jess. But um, this is located at the base of your spine. I mean, the root chakra is located at the base of your spine. Its color on the frequency scale is red. Um, it, oh, well, let me, preface, let me preface this by saying. So what I like to do is I like to spend a day, when I'm like feeling crazy, I like to spend a day in each of my chakras. I will do Monday in my root chakra, Tuesday in sacral, um, Wednesday in solar plexus, all the way up. I've currently, about a week or so ago, I started going through my chakras because I was like, I'm feeling out of alignment. I need to do something. I need to reset. So I spent, I've been spending two days in each chakra. So I'm actually, today I'm going through my um, third eye chakra. This is the first day of me going through my third eye chakra. Um, and it was a day. I had a whole moment before this class. <laughs> I got myself together, but I just, but yeah. So, so when I say walk through the chakras, I'm basically going to explain like what I do when I walk through my chakras during the day and how I use crystals as I walk through that chakra. Okay, so root chakra. Desert Rose. Desert Rose can also be used to work on your third eye chakra, so I could actually use this today as well. But um, your root chakra is red. It deals with, I have some notes, so I might be looking at those, but it deals with um, ancestral memory. So any like family trauma, you know, we, we hold memories in our DNA. So we, even if something didn't happen to us, but it happened to our mom, our grandma, our great 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 grandma we feel that trauma so your root chakra is where you start to exercise that ancestral memory that ancestral trauma or it could be something good it's not always trauma with us but um your root chakra is your foundation is it's the el it's the element that it's associated with is earth so just think about the ground that you walk on you want that to be stable and sturdy so your root chakra has to deal with your um, courage, your stability. Do you feel stable when you go out into the world? Do you feel secure when you go out into the world? Or does your ground feel uneven? Um, if it's uneven, then you probably need to work through your root chakra. Um, it has to do with physical energy, your life force. It has to do with your the dark matter that we have within us. Dark matter is the thing that allows us to create. And we can either create negative things or we can create positive things. So if your root chakra is out of alignment, you um, you are probably manifesting, you're probably caught in a loop where you're manifesting. So
something negative in your life and you and you're aware of that and you want to get out of it do root chakra work my favorite thing about the root chakra is it's related to alchemy so um are you able to take the circumstances in your life and be an alchemist and change them into something that works for you or that is healthy for you um yeah, I like root chakra a lot. I, I got a lot of healing. I get a lot of healing done when I do root chakra work. But something you can do with the desert rose, if you're walking through your root chakra, is I like to keep the desert rose on my nightstand just all the time because it is such a spiritual crystal and it's a grounding spirit uh, crystal at the same time. So when I'm dreaming, I like having this frequency by me because it'll hold me down and I won't get lost in my dreams, my visions, my nightmares, whatever happens. I dream a lot. So whatever happens in my dream when I wake up, I can still feel grounded, maybe interpret it, drink my water that's next to it. But like this, I, I feel like this is a really good guide crystal. So it's a really good root crystal. So I like to keep it on my nightstand. Um, sacral. So the second chakra is your sacral. It's located at the womb for women at men for men it's like in that same area um it's associated with the color orange and the element um water water has to do with emotions um so your sacral is all about emo your emotions when you work through your sacral you're trying to have emotional control uh, or that's a the sacral is a good area to work through your emotional issues. Sacral um, is about creativity, um, your relationships, your friendships, your partnerships. Lord knows I've had to work through these. Um, your sacral is about birthing and rebirthing yourself. Um, it's about pleasure, oh, sensuality, sexuality. Sacral is a fun one. Um, it's about play, um, authenticity, imagination, visualization. So the sacral is really important. That's why I'm always talking about do womb work. All of us women need to do womb wellness work. I'm going to say that again. All of us women need to do womb wellness work. This ain't the... I don't know. We're in 2020 and they are attacking our wombs and it's very important for us to do womb wellness work. My recommendation recommendation is to start with detoxing. And I just want to say the crystals work best when you're working on a pure body, mind and spirit. Body is also included. You have to <laughs> you have you have to you have to, like, you're not going to be able to harmonize with these if you're clogged up with potato chips and ice cream. Like, the crystal is going to be sitting here next to you like, sis, no, what? I can't even get through to you. Like, you're clogged up. So, yeah, that that's important. But womb wellness work, especially when you detox, you're working on your womb. So, detoxing Doing a juice, extended juice cleanse is always a great place to start for everything. Um, but when it comes to the sacral, this is carnelian. This can also be used for the root. A lot of times you can look at crystals by their color and say, oh, okay, well, this is red, so I can use it for the root. Or this is orange, so I can use it for sacral solar plexus. But... Um, not always, so just Google. But this is a good one that you could use for root and sacral. But I'm talking about sacral right now. What I like to do with it, I mean, when I'm doing womb wellness work, I will tuck this carnelian right here and keep it right here on my womb and just go around the house <laughs> and do stuff. Um, meditation, if I'm doing a meditation, oh, if I'm doing breath work, Whenever I do breath work, I'm usually usually laying down and I'll put this on my womb. Um, even just like if I'm watching TV, like carnelian is very powerful and especially like it's raw. Um, 
when the crystals are in their raw form, the frequencies are stronger because they've been they haven't been messed with as much. Um, so yeah, I'll just keep it on my womb. Um, so this is a this is one that I really like to touch me. Like the desert rose, it's so pretty. I'll just put it somewhere and just like I like to be around it. But the carnelian, I like having it on me, touching my womb. Like it's a really powerful stone. You can tell by the color. Is it means business, but it's, it's here to help you with those lower things in your lower self. So the first three chakras are frequencies that you have to deal with to master your lower self. So this, I mean, this is so powerful because think about the demon children that... <laughs> okay. Think about the demon children that women be having... They got to do womb work, like, or think about the, the just, like, messed up ideas that people be coming up with, because your sacral has to do with your creativity, whether you're creating life, you're creating ideas, you're creating a concept, whatever, whatever's going on in your womb is going to manifest into your creation, so, you know, you can usually converse with someone or look at someone's surroundings and tell what's going on with their sacral. So that's why I'm, I'm telling everyone to do womb work because a lot of people not doing it. Okay. This is citrine. This is good for working in your solar plexus. I love the solar plexus. Um, solar plexus is your third chakra. It's associated with the color orange and the element of fire. And um, so this is where, this is your core. This is your energetic core. This is what keeps you upright. So if you 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 worked on the um, root, so your your feet are sturdy. You worked on your womb, so you're you're able to manifest positive, beautiful things. And now when you go out in the world, you can hold your head up high um, after working on your solar plexus. This is your inner fire. This is your, your soul power. This is your vitality. This is your ability to energize and reinvigorate yourself. Um, if you had a bad day, are you able to get back up the next morning and handle what you got to handle? If not, you need to work on your solar plexus. If you are, then you have a strong solar plexus. Um, and the thing is, even if all your chakras are strong and aligned, you need to keep doing the work, I think, just to keep them there. Um, because we are beings who can go in flux, you don't want some poop putt to come around you and now your chakras all messed up because you let your guard down or whatever. So I like to continue to do chakra work even if I'm feeling good that day. That's actually even a better time. I love walk, working through my chakras and I'm having a good chakra day. Like, yeah, I feel confident today. Like, yeah, solar plexus shit. Um, so yeah, magnetism. Like what are you drawn, what are you attracting to you? self-confidence, orientation, when you go out in the world, are you oriented, um, willpower, self-worth, inner light, so something you could do with the citrine, um, again, this is a good one to put in your bath water, so um, if you're just feeling like you need a confidence boost, citrine is a great one to work with, I also like having citrine touch me, I want to get some citrine jewelry just so I have it on me, um, Something that I'll do, like, my partner and I, we will, you know, make food and sell it. We'll vend, sell our products. Um, he's an herbalist. I have stones and jewelry. Um, when we, oh, because citrine is a good one for manifesting money. So, when we go out, I will put a citrine in my pouch right next to the money. And, you know... All things work better with intentions also, so you can't just put a citrine in your pounce and be like, hmm, I hope I make money today. Like, you gotta put it in your pouch, put it on you and say, let's go make this bread. Great stone for that. It's a great manifesting money stone. The fourth chakra is the heart chakra. Um, its color is green. And its element is air. Um, so 
but the rose quartz is pink, so it's easy to associate with the heart. Um, I love ro rose quartz also. I love all of them, but yeah, I love rose quartz. Um, the heart chakra has to do with self-forgiveness, self-love, compassion for others. One of the things I learned about the heart chakra that I love is um, that it has to do with boundaries. That was my issue. Like, I was doing heart chakra work, and I realized the the thing that I need to work on was like protecting it in a healthy way, not building a wall around it, but like expressing my boundaries. So, if you have trouble with that, doing heart chakra work is a really amazing thing to do. Like, I started having boundaries, and people didn't know what to do. I love it. Like, I be putting my boundaries everywhere. Um, <laughs> But um, trust, faith, faith in yourself, faith in the universe, faith in the creator, faith in faith that um, when you go out into the world, you're perfectly aligned. If you're doing the work, you don't have anything to worry about. Um, so rose quartz is such a beautiful stone to wear on you. So you see, I have my rose quartz heart. Um, I have it close to the heart chakra. Rose quartz is just such a beautiful jewelry stone. So this is a good crystal um, to wear. Again, doing breathe, breathing exercises. What I will do sometimes when I do my breathing exercises, and the exercises that I do are Wim Hof. Um, they're amazing. They saved my life, the breathing exercises. Shout out to Wim. Um, I will, when I'm laying there, I will have a stone on every chakra. And like when I do that, I just get my whole life together. It's amazing. But yeah, I'll have it right here on my heart. So this is another one that I just might like walk around the house and put in my bra and just, you know, feel the energy, feel the love. This is a good one to put next to you. This is a great one to put in your bath water. If you need some self-love, if you need to work on loving someone else, this is a really, really beautiful stone. It's It's a really like strong but gentle stone if that's why it's, it's so amazing for self-love because it's just like it just reminds you that everything is good that you're beautiful too like i said these frequencies remind you of the frequencies that are in you it's such a forgiving stone like forgive yourself forgive other people of course because other people are not worth it but forgive yourself like Listen, life is too short. You can't walk around with your head down thinking about something that you did. All you can do is try and be a better person. And Rose Quartz reminds me of that all the time. Um, the fifth chakra is the throat chakra located at the throat. It's associated with the color blue or like light blue. Um, um, it has to do obviously with like using your voice. But when you go deeper, it's about your personal power, your voice. So we're the only living beings that can talk words to each other, who can communicate in a complex way with words. I'm going to say with words because whales communicate in a complex way too and dolphins. But we're the only ones who use words and we're the only ones our words manifest things our words create things around us like if you're speaking positive words to yourself your life will change it might not be overnight but it will start to change if you're only speaking negative words to yourself you will start to reflect that in your life like our words are powerful so your throat chakra is all about that personal power that you have um the things that you speak have meaning and they have consequence um that's become a, a huge lesson for me. Um, your throat chakra is about your personal responsibility. Like, what are you putting out into the world? Also, your throat chakra is a mirror of, so your throat, your third eye, and your crown is where we start to get to the, your higher self. The heart is the bridge. The heart chakra is the bridge between the lower chakras and the upper chakras. So your throat chakra serves as a mirror for your solar plexus. So if your solar plexus is on fire and you have a positive self-image, confidence, your throat chakra mirrors that. So the things that you say are positive toward yourself and toward other people and toward 
all of creation that's here in this universe. So that's a good way to check if you have work to do in your lower self. What are you saying? Like, are people always complaining about, like, you and the stuff that you're saying? Or let me not even use people, because... But are you recognizing that, damn, like, I was real negative for no reason. Like, you have to check yourself. People don't check themselves as much as they need to. You have to check yourself. When you go home at night, I will have a full damn conversation with myself, like... Why? Why'd you do that? <laughs> and then I'll be better the next day. But yeah, your throat chakra is your mirror. So this that's why it's personal responsibility. What are you putting out into the world and manifesting? Um, this is where your truth is. This is this is your personal power. The, the throat chakra is really powerful. If you get sore throats a lot, um, that means you have some work to do on your throat chakra. If you see my experience is throat chakra being closed up, so, but some people have a super open throat chakra where they just say whatever comes to mind that needs to be brought into balance too. The thing is, everything needs to be in balance. Um, so one way that's oh, so this is aquamarine, and one of the ways that I like to work with the throat chakra with my crystals, I might put this in water. Um, and then charge it and then drink the water because that's like an obvious relationship to the throat. Um, again, breathing exercises, I might do that. Um, if I'm working through my throat chakra, this is also a good one that I like to put under my pillow and sleep with because it will allow me to like, when you're, when you're sleeping, that's when you're in a super rest period and that's when you're um, picking up frequencies and communications from other spiritual realms, whatever is by you, your body is in a mode where it's very susceptible to anything that's around it, any like spiritual things that are around it when you're sleeping. So I like to have aquamarine um, near me when I'm sleeping because it just like it just helps me to like wake up in my power. Yeah. So the sixth chakra is. Um, your third eye, which I said I'm currently working through today. And um, the color that it's associated with is per oh, no, it's indigo, um, which is like a dark blue, but sometimes you'll see it's like purple, um, which is why I have on purple-ish right now. It kind of looks gray, but when I walk through my chakras, that's another thing that I do. I, I like to wear the colors of the chakra, but the stone that's associated with your third eye um, one of the stones is amethyst. Amethyst is, again, a really pretty stone. This is something that amethyst is like a all-purpose stone. It's a calming stone. It's a spiritual stone. I like to put it in water. I like to put it in my bath water. I like to sleep with it. I like to do breathing exercises with it. I like to wear it. All of those things, um, I like to just have it near me. So, it's a really great stone to just do whatever you want to do with them. Honestly, you can do whatever you want to do with all the stones. Um, but some just have, you know, a nice purpose that you might get into. Oh, but just so you know, the third eye chakra has to do with your intuition, wisdom, your discernment, your ability to perceive reality. Like, are you seeing what you what's really in front of you? Are you just looking at things based on your programming. Your programming might be your family situation that you grow up with, your experiences with friends and lovers. Um, yeah, the things that you watch on, the things that you consume, your music, the things that you watch on TV. You know, um, you have to clear the cobwebs of that programming and make sure that you're seeing clear. So your third eye helps you with that. Your third, working through your third eye chakra helps you with that. Um, it's also about frequency. Like, what frequency are you in throughout the day? When you work through your third eye chakra, you're able to see what frequency, what's my resting frequency? And is it at a place where I want it to be? I'm trying to be where this amethyst is. So I'm constantly working to get my amethyst up. I mean, my um, frequency up, up, up. 
up to the crown. So this is clear quartz. It's associated with your crown chakra. Clear quartz um, is like the OG stone. Just like I said, you can do everything with amethyst. Clear quartz, you can do everything, all of that with clear quartz and more. Clear quartz is actually a great stone to have like next to your other stone. So if you're working on any one of these chakras or working with any one of these stones, if you have clear quartz next to it, it helps enhance whatever that frequency of that stone is. So it's a really cool, th this is why like I put it in the beginner's kit because everyone should have a clear quartz so that whatever stone you work with you have your clear quartz next to it and with it and um, yeah, it enhances all of the work that you're doing. Your crown chakra, its element is time and space and it has to do with cosmic energy. Your crown's at the top of your head. It's how you receive your wisdom from the creator. Um, it has to do with God consciousness, nourishment for your body, distribution of enemy, energy. If you think about it like this energy is coming in from the cosmos through your crown, which is why it's important to wear your natural hair, just so you know. Because these are antennas. You want that energy to hit your antennas and disperse itself all through your body in the right places. Get those chakras whir whirling up. It's not a joke. Like you gotta, you gotta treat yourself like the the queens that you are. But um, sometimes I will dead ass walk. Okay, it just went under the couch. But sometimes I'll walk around the house with the clear quartz, just on my antenna, just so I can get that frequency. Um. I just, in the shower, I had my clear quartz and my amethyst because I wasn't take I didn't have time to take a bath before this. I was just running the water on me and I just had the crystal like this. Like, these things will help recharge you if you um, make the proper intentions and work with them well. But yeah, I would say my takeaways are you be intentional when you work with your crystals. Um, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, if you don't think it's going to work, then it's not going to work. So you have to see the value in the crystals. And if they don't work for you, then don't work with them. It's totally fine. You can find other things that work for you on your journey. I love crystals just because I love beautiful things. And they help me find my, the best version of myself. Don't be codependent on your crystals. You can go out in the world without your crystals. Um, it's okay. It's okay if you never see one of your other crystals again. Whatever it needed to accomplish, it accomplished that with you. That's why it left. Um, oh, charging them. So, whenever you first get a crystal, you should cleanse them. Just to reset the energy, the frequency. You don't know where they came from, what they, what they went through to get to you. Um, so you can sage, them, light a sage, and smudge them. Um, a Palo Santo or a piece, a stick of incense, and you know, let the smoke envelop them. Let me see if I can show you. And um, another way you could chart, you can cleanse them in water. Um, you could put them in a bowl of water. Just Google which ones, because some will break if they're put in. They'll become more fragile if they're put in water. Um, so yeah, you just want to get that smoke all around it, turn it, flip it, rub it down, all that stuff in the smoke. Um, you could charge them in water. I believe you can use like salt water. I've done that before to really clean them. Um, and then you can also, I keep saying charging because you can charge them in sunlight or moonlight. Um, that helps cleanse them and it also helps like literally charge them like a battery, like get them. So if you've like, let's say you've been using the carnelian a lot during your womb work, um, you 
you need to that carnelian is picking up whatever you're giving off so you need to go ahead and charge it just to reset it so it could get all that funky energy that you put on it um away and let me think if there's anything else any questions yeah citrine is a bomb um i think that's it so thank you everyone who tuned in thank you everyone who who stayed to the end and yeah if you're interested in the chakra crystal kit you can dm me on at other underscore sons or at amir mercer or go to other and purchase so all right love you bye